Hi, it's Wednesday night, the 4th of November, and day 309 of my journey to business alignment. I'm still living the dream, and my power student for this morning said, Kashif should be finished with the Ask Coach B page, and so I'm ready to sign up for Appointlet as well as Entreport and get those two programs integrated into my website so I can launch the website. Well, here's what I had on my to-do list, to list for today, which is Wednesday. Got them all down, I'm going to mention to that. My most important task for today was to follow up with Kashif to see if one of the bugs was fixed on that Ask Coach B page that I found yesterday. My fun task for today was to order the Appointment Premium Plan and the Entreport Membership System so we can start those integrations, but only if Kashif had the Ask Coach B fixed by today. And my exciting task for today was to keep working on the remaining tasks that I'm checking off off of my master task list. Well, because these three main tasks hinged on Kashif fixing them during the night while I slept, I have to say that when I woke up this morning and checked on the Ask Coach B page to see if th that bug has, had been fixed, I found that it hadn't been fixed yet. I, <laughs> I tested it several times and the same error kept coming up, and so I wasn't able to do the other two fun and exciting tasks today. I'm communicating with the uh, to sheep, but I'm not getting a response back. The, the time thing's kind of tough. It's getting down to crunch time, however. And so I reached out to Kashif, like Kashif, like I said, it's 11.30 p.m. tonight, my time. And so it's 10.30 in the morning for Kashif tomorrow morning. He said, that's Thursday morning. He hasn't responded, so I will check on it in the morning, which is Thursday morning, like I said. This is the one drawback to the time difference that is between him and me, since he's from Pakistan, <laughs> and it's fantastic. But the savings I'm getting more than makes up for this small little challenge that we have. Hopefully, Kashif will see my messages and work on getting them fixed by the time I wake up tomorrow morning. I'll just wait to see what tomorrow brings. Isn't this exciting though? It's fun to be challenged. That's what living the dream is all about. I love it. When he gets them all figured out and fixed, it will be a day to celebrate. Now let's go over my end of the day success routine questions. Get honest with yourself, Marty. What didn't go well today? Or what could you have done better today? Did you wake up early and start strong? Did. Did you start your morning with power? Splashed water on my face, made the bed, went down and read the win the morning, win the day routine, my mindfulness time, my exercises, all of that. Yes, yes, yes. Were you productive throughout your day? I'll mention that here in a minute. Did you get the most important things done? Yes. Did you move your goals forward, pieces through the portal of my mind to the world of the physical? Did you show up as the person you wanted? Yes. What about your personal time with Kathleen? For the middle of the week, hump day, and the middle of Wednesday here? Yes, it was a great day. We relaxed. It was nice this evening. Were you present? Yes. And here's my end of the day success routine accountability questions. Were you honest with yourself this morning, Marty, about the task that you promised that you would get done? Well, I promised promised myself that I would make sure that all the bugs were fixed so that they wouldn't show up in my focus group going forward. The Ask Coach B page is such an important part of my coaching. It's one of the three main ways I coach, and so it has to be right. I also promised promise myself that I would just keep on getting uh, task after task after task done and checked off my master task list until they're all gone, and I can then focus on getting clients and launching my coaching business. It feels great. I also promised myself that if all the bugs were fixed, I would make those two calls into Entreport and Appointlet. As things uh, turned out, however, I didn't make those calls because Ask Coach B page isn't ready yet. Once again, I'm holding off until tomorrow to call them, but those are going to be two fun calls. The next question is, what movies did you watch during your mindfulness time today, Marty? Did you make time for them? And were there any new instant preplay movies that you watched today? Well, today, after watching my must-see TV favorite five movies, I decided once again to just head up into the office and get on with it and working on the tasks that I had on my list. It's uh, so exciting to see Kashif fixing these fixes, and I'm hoping that one bug's going to be fixed quickly. So my next question says, what's the one thing that would make all the difference going forward. What's that one thing and turn it into a power statement? Well, I still think that the one thing I can improve on going forward and it would make all the difference in my life, daily work going forward, is to focus on working at my thought management. I need to be better uh, in my control of what I choose to think about regarding certain circumstances especially. In other words, I need to better control my response time to my thoughts and feelings, period. And again, the CT FAR model plays a major role in helping me do this. At times it is hard because we forget the fact that we cannot control our circumstances 
circumstances. We can't change the things out of our control, such as what other people choose to do, especially when it is so bad and impactful on our lives. And I can, uh, all I can do is control myself, like I said, by controlling my thoughts, especially what I choose to make those circumstances mean to me in my life. That's why the one thing I am doing now is I'm choosing to focus on me and on being the better me and how I can show up each day and serve me best. I know this will make a huge difference in things going forward. So with that said, here's what I came up with for my power statement. I'll stay focused on thinking the kind of thoughts that empower me and give me back my power. And I will use the power to do what I need to do in order to succeed in my dream to become a great beginner entrepreneur, entrepreneur, business coach every day going forward. The next question I answer at the end of each every day before I go to bed as part of my end of the day success routine, there I did that again, success routine is to ask myself, were there any mistakes or failures that you may have made today, Marty, that I can turn into a tool of success going forward? Well, there was another possible mistake that I may have made, but I won't know if it was until the end of the day tomorrow. What I'm talking about is the fact that in closing out my email system at the end of the last month of October, I went into November not having an email marketing system to build out and blast email campaigns for my clients. I gambled on the fact that I would have the Entreport um, system up and going before any of them might need to request a campaign during the month of November. Well, sure enough, with the delays that I've had now uh, on the um, Ask Coach B part of this and not signing up with Entreport yet, I'm going to have to do it tomorrow to do that campaign before the end of the day. Constant contact's gone, so I have to get in and sign it up and learn how to do it quickly and still send it up by the end of the day tomorrow. So at the end of the day tomorrow, when I do my video journal entry, I'll be able to tell you if the mistake was a mistake or if I managed to pull it off just fine. We shall see. Man, oh man. The next question is, what was your biggest success today, Marty? In other words, what did you do well today? Well, in reflecting on my day, I started strong even in the midst of chaos. I continued to stay strong all day, working through challenges and having a few challenges and a setback even, but I stayed the course strong. And now I'm finishing my day strong by doing this video journal entry. That's my big success today. Starting strong, staying strong, and ending strong. You can do that too. Now, continuing with my end of the day success routine, it's time to rate my day's effort. Reviewing today's effort, and once again, I've decided to give it a nine. And that's because I worked at the speed of nine, which is great. I also stayed focused on what I needed to get done today. And I got it all done, and I was able to finish the day having checked off several tasks that were important for me to get done today. They're smaller tasks, but they all apply to this business. It's great. Okay, I want to end the day strong here. Here's what I'm grateful for for today. I'm grateful for the principle that says to change our behavior. We must break the patterns that disempower us. But first, before we can do this, we must understand how our brain works so we can make these neural paths, these mappings, be in our favor. Here's the fact of the matter. Anytime we experience significant amounts of pain or pleasure in any of their forms, our brain immediately searches for a cause. And I'm talking about the subconscious mind going out there in our files and coming forth with all the support material to say, here's the problem. Here are six criteria that is used uh, by our subconscious to do this. Our brains look for something that appears to be unique so that it can narrow down the likely causes. Unusual feelings means unusual causes, right? Number two, our brains look for something that seems to be happening simultaneously. It's called the law of recency. In other words, what occurs in the amount of intense pleasure or pain is probably the cause of that sensation or feeling. Number three, our brains look for consistency. As we experience pain or pleasure, our brains begin to notice what is all around us, that it is unique and is happening simultaneously. If that, excuse me, it if that element occurs consistently too, whenever we feel this pain or pleasure, then the brain determines it's to be the cause. Let me make a point of caution here, however. We must evaluate linkages like these three criteria are doing before they become a part of our unconscious decision-making mapping. And that's because uh, too often, <coughs> excuse me, we blame the wrong cause and end up closing ourselves off from possible solutions. We can and often do make false mapping so be careful not to link up a false cause to your pain or pleasure. 
many of these kinds of connections, when wired up or linked up falsely, end up limiting our lives. These principles lead to the next thing I'm grateful for. It's the law of self-sabotage, which says mixed mapping is a classic source of self-sabotage. It's related to these false uh, linking I'm going to talk about now. Have you ever started something you were excited about and have begun and to accomplish it in a big way and then ended up sabotaging yourselves, destroying it? Mixed mapping is usually the culprit. May, uh, many of you start a business but having are having fits and starts, flourishing one day and only to flounder the next. What's causing this? It's a case of associating both pain and pleasure to the same situation. A good example of this is money. Simultaneously, most people never climb uh, above a certain earning plateau because down deep in, they have associated excess money to a lot of negative and even emotional pain. They associate it to greed, to being judged, to stress and or fear of losing it, or immorality or a lack of spirituality and therefore sabotage any progress um, that uh, they may have caused by these mixed mapping wall. Brainstorming all the positive associations you have regarding wealth and all the negative, negative ones you have too may reveal your own mixed mapping that is causing you to sabotage your own success. That's that negative false linking up to a pain and, and pleasure at the same thing. It's, it's crazy. So there you go. Oh, I do want to make this one comment. Tony Robbins said, when you give your brain mixed messages, you're going to get mixed results. Isn't that great? There's a science to all, all of this. Like I said, keep in mind that it is not just the number of factors on each, <clears throat> excuse me, I got something in my throat here, <clears throat> on each side of the ledger of pain versus pleasure, but the weight each of them carry. It's possible that you could have more pleasure than painful associations about money, for example, but it, if just one of the negative associations is very intense, then that false mixed mapping or association can sabotage your success financially. Let me repeat that. It's possible that you could have more pleasurable than painful associations about money, for example, because you've connected it up, you linked them up, you false map mapping. But if just one of these negative associations is very intense, then that false mixed mapping or association can sabotage your success financially. Well, there you go. Once again, it's time to go to bed. And so until we meet again right here at my laptop tomorrow night, I wish you all continued success. Good night.